Hey, man, you know that TV show, Hoarders? Well, I called them up a couple months ago and told them you had a major mental disorder that uh, requires you to hoard miniature paints. You what? Anyway, they finally got back to me, and uh, tomorrow morning, a couple of psychologists and four garbage trucks are going to be showing up at the house here and helping you nip this in the bud. God damn it, Daryl. <laughs> The internet has brought it to my attention that I own a lot of miniature paints. 1,748 unique paints, to be exact. Is that too many paints? Probably. Will I use them all up before I die? Probably not. Ladies and gentlemen, we've done it. We've officially reached the peak that every YouTuber strives for, and of course, I'm referring to working with today's sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. And I know what you're thinking, you've seen your fair share of raid ads before, but if you're anything like me, you actually hadn't tried the game for yourself yet. I finally tried it out for myself, and I gotta tell you, the 80 million people around the world that have downloaded this game really are onto something. The game is actually way more fun to pick up and play for just a few minutes at a time than I had expected. Raid also keeps you interested with new champions and new game content released each month like this month's Hydra Clash event, where your tactical prowess is truly tested. Which of its heads do you take down first? Maybe it's the Head of Torment that will fear your party, or the Head of Blights that will poison and weaken your entire squad. So if you haven't tried out Raid yet, now really is the time. Oh, and if you're part of Elite Clan, why don't you hook up Ninjon with an invite that's with a zero instead of an O because some butthead already stole my name. So go download the game and use the QR code on the screen or the link down in the video description to get yourself set up with this free starter kit of sweet loot. A big thank you to Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get back to it. So in order to make me feel a little bit less guilty about all of my paint purchases, as well as to help you figure out which paints are worth your money and which aren't, let's take a quick tour around my studio and figure out the best and worst things about each paint range. All right, our first stop is over here in the Island of Misfit Toys. Behind me, I've built a collection of cabinets where I can display my minis and put some stuff in storage, and that's where these paints have collected. Let's look through the stuff that I don't use on a super regular basis and figure out why. First box here is the full collection of war colors, and they are a bunch of nice vibrant paints and they have the best bottles on the market if you want my honest opinion they're super clear to read what color is inside that's the actual paint the problem with them is that while they have a bunch of super interesting vibrant colors the coverage leaves a lot to be desired they're great for working up some glazing or some adding of interesting colors but in terms of an everyday driver paint range they're just not that great. All right, this tote is filled with all the old Citadel hex pots from, I don't know, 10, 20 years ago. I did a whole video where I painted something just with these. They're still mostly all dried up. And other than keeping the wonderful inks that I have set aside over there, there's really no purpose for me owning these anymore now that I've done a video about them. I will say that this pot design is both simultaneously the coolest looking pot for miniature paints ever, as well as the worst functioning ever, as there's a ton of air that gets into these, which is why they dry up so much faster than even paints that are older. Next is a tub filled of overflow. Yeah, this is all paint for the most part that are extras, but what this does have in it is almost the full range of the Nocturna N paint set. By and large, this paint range is garbage. Um, I backed it on Kickstarter, and I don't even think you can buy it one or two years after the Kickstarter went through because it's absolute trash. The coverage is terrible. There's just no consistency across the range in terms of how thin or thick anything is. There's no unique factors that this paint brings to the market that other ranges don't already accomplish. It just feels like it's completely derivative of anything that needs to exist. Don't buy this. Oh, also in here are the Vallejo model washes in these big bottles. I bought these a number of years ago and uh, their consistency is that of Hershey's chocolate syrup. Don't buy this. Starting out on a real positive note for all these paints, huh? Couple here that a friend had sent me because they asked if I had ever used any color shifting paints before. If you like color shifting paints or you want some cool effect on a small area of your model, these ones seem to work pretty well. 
I would strongly encourage you to use them through an airbrush, if at all possible, in the paint process because they suck to do 17 layers by brush to actually get the effect. Next thing over here are two sets of Army Painter paint. The air range especially is beginner friendly and they're readily available. Most game stores cover them. If you want a more full breakdown, check out my video on those. Next is the Full Speed Paint 2.0 complete set. Now I've messed with this a little bit to test how well the new formula works and by and large, it's pretty solid. What's good about this speed paint version is one, it's way more affordable than the game's workshop set. Two, you get a lot more colors, so you have a lot more variability. And three, you've got certain colors that are more faint and certain colors that are more strong. So you can kind of mix up your uses with them. A couple of the unique colors I like from this range are the ochre clay, which is a nice, almost like tan with a hint of green to it, as well as the slaughter red and murder stone. I realized I made a mistake. I have more paints back here. So when I said I had 1,748, I actually forgot to count these because I forgot where I'd put them. This paint range, which is the Cuttlefish Colors paint range. And this stuff is very similar to Reaper paints in that it comes off the bottle really smooth, really thin down. And it doesn't have awesome coverage because of that, but it does have a ton of unique colors in the range. I feel like there's a number of colors in this set that I just don't see in other sets. So I really like it because of that. They're also the best paint namers in the business. This color is Liquid Yam, Bruised Ego, Soft Serve Brown, and everyone's favorite Kevin. All right, we're over to the workstation itself. And the first shelf we have here are my AK Interactive Dual Exo paints. Now, these are interesting because they're actually a paint and primer in one. So I use these just basically to prime my models and then to do a little zenithal from above with the secondary color because they're always in two color pairs in an A and a B. I do like most of them. I really like the reds and purples to start off with a nice prime that's super vibrant. And here we have the Golden So Flat paints, which are actually artist acrylics, not made for miniature painting, but they're nice and smooth. They do have a pretty limited number of colors in the range and they're not cheap. So if you want to get one or two colors, it may be worth it. Honestly, any of the colors in the range are probably going to be the best version of that color that you own. The teal, the burnt sienna are probably the two that I lean on the most. The vast majority of this rack are my old P3 paints. Now they're not easy to get and that can be a detriment for this paint range, but they have so many colors that are so good. Honestly, I could go through here and just take off like a dozen or more colors. That's how many that I really enjoy. Troll Blood Base, Rucksack Tan, Coal Black is a cool off black. That's a lot, a little bit of a grayish blue to it. Amazing. And Sanguine Base is a great starting point for any red or burgundy color. This range is extremely creamy out of the bottle, meaning that a two brush blends really, really well. It can work thick, but also isn't gloopy. It doesn't use a weird gel medium that's hard to work with. Oh, and if you want to pick up any of the paints you see here today or any hobby tools or any model kits, I'm excited to announce I now am working with Michigan Toy Soldier out of the United States here. They have the largest online selection of literally anybody I've seen. They have a great discount on everything they carry on their store. And if you use the code NINJON2023, you get an additional 5% off any order, any time. And that helps support the channel. So thank you for those of you that use that code. This rack over in the corner is almost entirely the Citadel paints from the newest range. And I put them all into dropper bottles. Well. Not all of them, there's a couple of rows down here that are all colors that I've been too lazy to transfer over to paint bottles. And I'm kind of neglecting that because a lot of my other ranges just do what this range does, but better. The best thing about this paint range, honestly, is that a lot of people use it. So if I paint with these colors for a video, a lot of people will already have the paints but they're not the best version of those paints by and large. Now they do have a number of colors that I just love and probably will always use. Things like Bugman's Glow, Averlin Sunset, Mornfang Brown, Iron Rack Skin. How do I pronounce this? Oh, it's just Deepkin Flesh. Deepkin Flesh, great color. Now on this workspace, I've got a number of paints like the couple of Nocturna ones that I talked about earlier that I sometimes use as well as stuff I just don't have room on the shelf for yet. I also have these funny shaped bottles in the Dollar Rowney inks. 
as well as a bunch more pro acrylics. I need to get up on the rack once I can find more space. Where I'm likely to find some more space is to remove the Vallejo model color and scale 75 paints that are here on this rack. I simply do not use them that much anymore. Now granted, there's some tried and true colors in the old Vallejo model color range, like sunny skin tone, armor brown, and dark sea blue, but those colors are now being made by manufacturers that I prefer their paint quality more. Next up is the scale 75 range, and I'll be honest, I just don't use them that much. They were the first brand that came out with this boutique range, which is now kind of all the rage and why we've seen so many new paint ranges in the last couple of years. They use a gel-like medium, meaning that they act differently than a majority of our miniature paint brands. And you really need to get used to that and kind of become an expert in working specifically with that range Otherwise, I feel it's like painting with your left hand. Because I don't paint with them a lot, I don't know if they're worthy of the space they currently hold on my wall, not that they're a bad paint range. And they have some wonderful colors. I really love abyssal blue, red leather, and birch. And even if I don't use a lot of these colors, there's at least a half dozen that I'm gonna keep and use on a regular basis just because of the wonderful tones that they have. On this rack, we've got two wonderful ranges, the Pro Acryl range and the Chimera range. Pro Acryl is amazing because just about every single paint in their range acts just the same, meaning if you know how to expect them to work, they'll all work that way. They're nice and smooth. I wouldn't call them thin, but I also wouldn't call them thick. They have this interesting medium in them that allows you to work a little bit longer with the paint before it fully dries. Obviously, my favorite colors in this range are from my six paint signature set, which you can still pick up. There were colors that I love to use in other ranges, and I just had them make them for us. But in all seriousness, their white is the best white on the market, hands down. I also love their olive flesh color and, of course, mahogany. Next, we have the Chimera paint range, which is some over here and some down there, and my OCD kinds of hates that. I want them all together, so we're gonna have to rearrange soon. Now, their big claim to fame when they first came out was single pigment paints, meaning they were super punchy and vibrant and true to that original pigment color. But they've come out with other artist ranges that have different mixes, and many of those mixes are really nice, particularly Cloudy Sky, Morning Sky, and Dark Honey. These two paint ranges being on the same rack is really interesting. On one hand, they're both very high quality, but in different ways. But on the flip side of that coin, you have something like the Pro Acryl range that is an all around daily driver. You can use that whether it's quick army painting all the way up to display painting, or the Chimera seems very limited, very focused on an artsy style of things. And I don't know if that's for everybody. Plus you can't buy singletons of the paints that I've ever seen. So you're gonna have to commit to a fairly sizable purchase for a fairly small set. Now, before we move into the final wall of paints, I wanted to talk about this drawer here. It has a bunch of enamels, oils, and pigment powders in here, which is not what we're covering today, but there is one acrylic range in here, and that is the Scale Color Artist range. These are miniature paints, but in tubes, and along the lines of all these boutique brands coming up with some different niche to make you want to buy their range, this is what they came up with. The problem is we need our paints to be quite thinned down and smooth as to not obscure the details in the model and go on goopy. So even if you have a big thick tube paint, you're gonna thin it all the way down anyway to just work like any other paint in a bottle. You're just making three more steps for yourself to get to that step. That's not to say that these things don't have their value. Sometimes you wanna work with a small amount of very thick paint to have a really opaque, punchy part of your model that really catches the eye and these can do that but most of the time that's not the case and by and large when you're going to want to do that is just for a spot highlight of pure white which is why i just have my bottle of schminka artist white for that but to have every other paint in your entire collection do that same thing is just going to not be worth the effort there are some lovely colors in here pearl gray yellow ochre, off-white, and dark ultramarine, which is a beautiful bluish purple. Those colors do exist in other ranges though, and honestly, the best part about this paint range is that you get to scoff at all the peasants that still paint miniatures with paint and bottles. All right, home stretch. And this big rack is filled almost entirely with games, workshops, shades, and contrast paints. There is something I really want you to notice though, is that on the top, I have this 
Vallejo metal color stuff. I have an aluminum and a chrome here, and this really is magic in a bottle when it comes to metallics. My favorite metallics, bar none, are these paints. So get them. If you can, they're a little bit hard to track down. Next, shades and contrast. Look, they're expensive. You're probably going to spill it, and you're going to swear while you do it. As long as you're okay with both of those things, these things do their job, and they do it well. They do dry glossier than any other similar product on the market, which does frustrate me. So if I can use an army painter or a pro acryl or something else that does a similar effect i usually will just because i don't want to have to re-varnish the model because all this part was super shiny for the contrast paints my two favorite bar none are carebird crimson and seraphim sepia these colors don't really come in an exact match in any other brands and i really use them for a lot of different things they're definitely worth picking up for the contrast paints get versatile colors colors that can paint all sorts of neutrals things like the creed camo and the Xygore brown and the fire slayer flesh these colors are great in all sorts of different uses and you don't have to feel like you need to paint exactly one thing for one army to get some use out of them i don't know where to stand where you can see me in the paints i guess we're gonna go here over here we've got the two thin coats paint range by lord and savior duncan himself now these colors are by and large knockoffs of all the best selling most popular colors from the citadel range and i love it they act super consistently across the entire range they're not too thin they're not too thick they're just nice and they cover really, really well as well as thinning down really well. Their total range isn't massive just yet either. So if you wanted to get a small range to just start miniature painting, it's not a bad set to start with. And as the range expands, you can slowly build on more colors to your set. It even comes with this nice conversion chart that tells you which Citadel colors are their color. I like Barbarian Brawn because it's Bugman's Glow, Dragon Fang because it's Xander Dust, and Gravestone Blue because it's Fenrisian Gray. Simple. All right, last but not least, we have the PCD Resistance, the AK Interactive 3rd Gen Full 240 color set. This is the most paints that I have by any singular range, and I know that any color I pick off the rack will work the same as others that I've used, even if I've not ever used that color before. It is a bit overwhelming, and I don't think you need all 240 colors of this set to really have a great time. In fact, you could probably get away with about 25 or 30 colors in this set, and it would take you for the majority of your miniature painting career. I have a hard time picking out just a couple colors from this range that are my favorite because there's so many of these that are my go-tos for whenever I need that kind of a color. I typically can find the one I need and it'll work great on this range. So here's a couple. Turquoise, Dark Rust, Emerald, Luminous Green, Beige Red, Decomposed Flesh, Buff, Warm Gray, Saddle Brown, Blue Gray, Russian Green, Grim Brown, star blue and last any of their colors that say pastel in front of them i think there's six or eight of them so pastel violet here is an example any of their pastel colors awesome for highlights thanks for joining me today for our little paint parade and for not judging me i'm curious am i the only one who does this or is there any of you out there that collect way more paints or tools or even model kits than any human has the right to own let me know down in the comments so i don't feel so alone in all of this and of course thank you to all of my wonderful patrons it's because of you i get to test out all sorts of miniature products so they collect dust on my shelves and not on yours now if you'll excuse me i've got something to go paint with 1748 different colors and i'm gonna see you back here again real soon but sometime between now and then make sure you find time in your day to slay the gray may have over exaggerated on a couple of the details you know like uh, saying that you had to crawl over your jugs of pee and poop in order to get into your painting area, but uh, I'm, I'm sure that's fine. I also said that you keep all the extra sprue bits for your models and you have fashioned them into a nest of sorts, and that is what you rest in every night.